Hey, what's up everybody? It's Coach Matt, EliteThrowsCoaching.com, and in today's video, we're going to be talking to you about the last portion of this 10-part series, video number 10, flicking the ball off the fingers correctly at the end of the throw. Probably one of the biggest issues, especially with younger throwers. It has a lot to do with just where you place the ball in your hand, teaching yourself how to flick properly, how to get the fingers in the right direction. But it also has to deal with elbow position and even how you put the ball up against your neck. So we're going to quickly go over that all for you today. Before I take you out in the circle, just want to remind you to subscribe to the channel. Click that link right down there. Subscribe button right down below and click the notification bell as well. This way you get notified every single week when a new video comes out. We're also doing a lot of video analysis sessions right now. So it's a chance for you to listen to me coach athletes right on the screen and show them what they're doing wrong. Probably a lot of stuff that you also need to work on as well. So make sure, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell, and we are going to go out in the circle right now and talk to you a little bit more about release and flicking your fingers out to the side. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about how to properly release the shot put. When you release a shot, we do not want the fingers pointed down to the ground. If you are a right-handed thrower, essentially what you want to do is the fingers are going to follow the path of the elbow. So if my elbow is here, when I go to push and release that shot, my hand is going to go out and push the shot, and then we're going to flick our fingers to the side. We don't want to drop the elbow and flick the wrist down. We don't want to just knuckleball it and not move our hand at all, or be here and not move our hand at all. And we definitely don't want to drop the elbow and push across our body like we're throwing a baseball or like we're throwing a football. We want to see the hand is out. Now I've got my hand a lot lower than you normally want it just to show you on camera. If I do this, you might not be able to see it, but we want the hand out and flick out to the side. Flick the hand out to the side at the very last second. All right, so if we're gonna talk a little bit more about the release, we first have to talk about how this thing fits in your hand properly. So I have a 12 pound indoor shot, okay? And I wanna show you that essentially what you have is the palm of the hand and what I call the basket of the hand. So the basket of the hand, it's right up against sort of the calluses of your hand and sitting back in the fingers. So it's not in the palm, it's in the basket. The thumb is on the side, just sort of holding it steady. So if I take my thumb off and shake, you can see the ball's kind of moving all over the place. The thumb just gently rests on the ball like this so that it doesn't move all over the place. It's just there for support. We don't want to kind of eagle claw it and grip the top of it like this. Okay, we don't want to have our fingers spread out really, really wide like this. We want all of the fingers behind the ball and we want to see that the ball is resting in the basket of the hand. Now, depending on the flexibility of your wrist, some people might be here. It might be really tough to let the wrist relax and keep the wrist back like this, but it's going to be one of those things you have to keep working on that you have to learn and just keep practicing over time and you'll be able to get that sort of bouncy like a, like a springboard, like a diving board, that kind of bouncy flick to the wrist. Now we also need to talk about how to put this thing up against the neck. Because if you do want that flick, if you do want that push, you can't have it in certain places in the neck. Okay, so if I were to turn sideways and show you guys this, we don't want the ball all the way back here, kind of behind the neck, or like sitting back behind the ear. It's going to be really hard to push it that way. We want to see the ball right up against the neck, okay? So right up against the neck, I want to see the thumb under the ball, and if I turn around, you should be able to see all four fingers behind the ball, okay? So you can see all four of my fingers. We don't want the fingers under, oh God, how do people do this? This makes my elbow feel like it's gonna explode. We don't want the fingers under the ball, because then it looks like we're going to push the thing straight up in the air. We want the fingers behind the ball, 
and I want it right underneath the chin. Now, I am pushing up against my neck, and my neck is kind of pushing up against the ball. If I had to relax my neck, I'd kind of start to fall this way, but I've got the ball up against my neck, and as you can tell, it's kind of changing my voice a little bit. The more that I talk to you, the harder I push in. Keep that thing stuck right underneath the chin. That way, when you're looking up at the end and the chest is up, it's got a nice clear path, a nice clear path to release from. You're not trying to like throw it from behind your ear and you're not gonna rip your ear off or rip your hair out for those of us with longer hair, not me obviously, but we want, don't want you to rip your hair out. We wanna see the fingers behind the ball. We want a nice big push and a flick. We don't wanna see this kind of twisting, palming, eagle claw, kind of getting the fingers from underneath it and flipping forward type of deal, okay? The last thing I wanna to talk to you about is elbow position. Everyone always says elbow up. And essentially what we mean when we say elbow up is that we just don't want your elbow like kind of down here like this, okay? Yes, Ulf Timmerman, I believe it was Ulf Timmerman threw that way, but it's because he put the ball really underneath his chin. Here's a good way of doing it. Do a push-up or go up against the wall and do like a wall push-up. Tell me where your hands are, okay? Are your hands all the way up here like this doing a wall push-up? Probably not. Are your hands all the way down here like this doing a wall push-up? Probably not. Your hands are back here doing a wall push-up. Or if you did a bench press, your hands are going to be here. Or if you were pushing a car, your hands are going to be here. You're not up in your ears like this, and you're not up here with your elbows like this, and you're not over your head like this. You're right here. And if I turn sideways, take a look at where my elbow is, okay? It's not all the way up here like that. Okay, that's not a strong position. That's not a powerful position. You would never try to do a push-up like this or push a car like this. You want those hands down here. You want that elbow down a little bit. So it's not all the way up here. It's more down here. So we get that nice solid push, push. So if you want to give it a degree, if this is zero and that's 90, we're somewhere in that 45 degree range when we push, okay? So now let's talk about it. Now we've got the angle of the elbow correct. We've got the ball in our hand correct. We've got it up against our neck correctly. Now let's talk about how to actually practice that good flick. All right, so we know when we hold the shot in our hand, we want it in the basket of the hand and we want the thumb on the side of the ball supporting the ball. We know to have it up against the neck with all four fingers showing behind. We don't want the elbow up here. We don't want the elbow down there. Somewhere right in the middle. So now you know how to put this thing up against your neck correctly. If there are any mistakes like that happening with your athletes, you need to change that stuff right this second. Those are habits no matter how great the beginning of the throw looks. The end of the throw is gonna look like garbage if they don't have that release correct and they're just kind of throwing all over the place. Okay, so here's the number one way that I like to teach my athletes how to push and flick the ball. Now there's the right way to do this and there's the wrong way to do this. So I'm gonna stand up. You probably won't be able to see my face anymore. And we're gonna stand up and show you what it looks like, okay? So when we are here, we wanna take the ball and put the ball in the basket of the hand. And then all I'm going to do is turn my hand upside down. So now I've got all four fingers right on top of the ball. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to forcefully extend my hand down and flick out to the side. So we're not going to roll it off of our hand like this. Okay, so it's not a roll getting backspin and it's not a shove without a push. It's a shove with a flick at the end. It looks like this. Shove and flick. Shove, flick. Shove, flick. And we're just gonna work on pushing and flicking. Pushing and flicking out to the side. Now, when you get that, what you can do is start to throw the ball up into the basket. So it's a little bit more ballistic. It's a little bit more active. We're gonna throw the ball up and push, up, push, up, push, up, push, up, push, okay? 
Now, here's what I want to see. You're in a big team. You've got 20, 25, 30 shot putters on your team. One circle. You got a bunch of kids just standing around doing nothing during practice. They should be doing 30 to 40 of these flicks every single day at practice. In a week, that's 150 to 200 flicks, and it's gonna build the strength in their wrist, it's gonna build really good release habits, and it's gonna build really strong fingers so that they're not having grip issues and they're not spraining or bending back fingers at the end of their season. All right, so those are some great ways to do it. I'm gonna back the camera up. I'm going to throw the shot over the camera so you can see kind of in a finished position what this is going to look like. Okay, here we go. Operation Don't Break the Camera starts right now. So we're gonna take the ball up against the neck. Remember, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the arm in, push and flick, and now I'm gonna be pushing way up here with a good release, somewhere in that 45 degree area. Some people say a little less, some people say a little bit more. Glide, we want right in that kind of 43, 44, 45 degree angle, pushing up and flicking. Whew. Let's not break the camera. Looks like this. We're here, up against it. All the weight is shifted onto our left foot, onto our blocking foot. We're going to pull in and push and flick. Ready and go. There it is. Push and flick out to the side. So as you guys can probably tell, I don't do a lot of throwing anymore. So my flick is not super out to the side. It's kind of side and down. And that's a good lesson for you. You might be all over the place. You might not think that you're kind of flicking enough. As you get more flexible, as you work on this more, you're gonna get better and better and better at flicking. Now, being that I'm 39 years old and I haven't thrown in a track meet competitively in 15 or so years, what that means is that I haven't worked on that flick as much as I need to. And you probably need to work on that flick a little bit more as well. So keep working on it, keep pushing yourself. If it doesn't look good or feel good right now, it will give it time and work on doing those pushes into the ground every single day at practice and you will be all set. All right, that just about does it for me. That is the end of our 10 part video series. All of the videos are going to be right in the playlist, which I'm going to put up here right at the end of the screen. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell, because next week we are gonna be doing the same 10 part series, the 10 biggest mistakes and corrections in discus and rotational shot. So up on the screen right now, you're gonna see the full playlist for these videos. You're also gonna see the place where you can subscribe to the channel. And then right down here, I'm going to put information for our overnight camp that happens at Allegheny College out in Western Pennsylvania. It starts at the very end of June and ends July 2nd. So right before the, the 4th of July holiday, get signed up, go visit the website. There's only about 30 spots left. So we are running out really, really quickly. Go check it out. Click all this stuff that just popped up and I will see you and talk to you all next week.